Hey guys, I'm Mark, and today I'm here at my buddy Wade's house. Wade has bees, uh, and he's gonna tell me a little bit about them. Wade helps me out at the nursery, and we're at his house right now, which is right down the road from the farm. Uh, I don't know much of anything about bees, so that's gonna kind of be the context, I think, of this conversation, is uh, I'm just gonna ask some questions from the point of view of somebody that doesn't know anything about bees. Um, so Wade, I guess my first question would be is like, how, how long have you been doing this? Well, I've been, um, I've had the bees for about two years now. Okay. And uh, basically when I got started, um, I just wanted to learn about them. And I also heard they were in trouble. Okay. You know, that, you know, it's right. all over the media and everything, you yeah. know, honeybees are, the numbers are declining. So I just wanted to try it out and see if I could, uh, I could help them out and, and uh, raise them myself. So it started out of a, curiosity thing and I've, I've learned a lot ever since I started it it's been a very rewarding uh, rewarding thing for me well it looks like it's working I mean they're <laughs> they're really they're really healthy looking yes. I mean, everything looks nice and cr clean and I mean they're, they're very active I mean it's, I guess they're settling down now yes right because it because it's evening yes yeah typically in the evening yep they are they're coming home after a long day of work and uh, um, yeah, that's that's when they're most calm. So it's that's perfect. a good way to put it. Right. <laughs> so I guess if it starts getting a little dark, uh, the the camera quality. I did want to mention that we are shooting in the evening because we don't want to get stung as much as possible. But that's what I guess what these are for, right? So we're right. gonna crack this open, and I'm gonna try to put this on. Yep. Um, yeah, it's nice to have just a layer of protection, uh, especially right. when you're opening up the hive. I just want to make sure there's none inside because <laughs> I've been standing here for a little while now. And that they, wouldn't be. They are curious. They uh, they do like to oh, crawl yeah. over you. All right, here we go. This is. I mean, I'm I'm surprised at how close we can just stand and not, <laughs> you know. They, they seem pretty chill. Yes, and these are um, these are what they call Italian honeybees, so they are known okay. to be a little more calmer than uh, than other kinds of bees. Do they have like what like other European honeybees, like English honeybees? Yes, or there's um, there's there's quite a few different types, um, and uh, okay. the ones I know of, they're common. There's Italian and Russians are common in this area. A lot of people get those. Really? Yep. Huh? See, I always thought they were just the European honeybees. Right. They? Right. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Do you think some are more like aggressive than others, maybe? Yes, or? The, Ru the Russians are do have a, a reputation for being a little on, more on the aggressive side. Okay. But yeah, my uh, my bees don't. Uh, I've never been stung by my bees, and I've definitely given them a reason to not like me. Opening up the hive. <laughs> we uh, we are wearing. I will say we're wearing a lapel mic, so uh, when we're messing around with this little collar thing, it's probably messing up the audio yeah. a little bit. Sorry Apologize if my velcro is a little loud. <laughs> um, yep, so when you get so the... Do I have this right? <laughs> it's just these uh, these two zippers will come in completely. Okay. And then you'll put the velcro flat down over And it. that protects yep. the, the covers. And then it. just glance down at your soap and make sure there's not a gaping hole anywhere and that the zippers are as tight as they can go. And okay. Should be good. So. All right. And I got... Was that honey on there? That is, yep. That's that, honey and uh, oh, wow. all kinds of different uh, stuff on there. Pollen and, and stuff. And, yep. Cool, man. Yeah. So we've got our gloves and everything. So, and so different. we're gonna open up this hive. Yes. And um, I see you got two hives here. Do you, yes. do you need to have two hives, or you just have one hive, or what? I mean, I, it uh, seems like a lot. I have learned that um, if you're uh, someone that wants to get started. Um, and not, you know, I went through this process a couple years ago. I, I looked all this stuff up and I did see that people recommend getting at least two um, because if something happens to one hive, then you have the other as a backup and you can basically borrow some of the brood, which is the baby bees or eggs from that hive and start a new hive. Would you do what's something called a split? So you split one hive and you can you can just as a backup and you can start a new one if something happens to one. Really? So they can sustain, yes. Well yes. so will they figure out how to like make a new queen yes, or something? Don't is, you need a new queen? Exactly. Or? Exactly. Yep. They will they'll make their own queen and wow. they'll, they'll know something's wrong at you know, when you move them after you move them, they'll realize there's no queen in this empty hive and they'll uh, they'll just they'll they're uh, self self sustaining little hard workers. So That's awesome. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, 
I guess yeah. uh, I guess let's crack her open. Yep, we'll crack her open. And this is uh, a lot of people are used to the uh, wooden but uh, wooden yeah. beehives, and these are this these are plastic. a little different. Um, these are what are called apame. That's the name of the uh, people that design and build these. They're called apame hives, and um, so, I like them because they have these nice sturdy latches on the sides. Yeah. Um, you don't ever have to uh, paint them. Yeah, um, I mean, they seem like they last forever, right. at least they, a really long time. They don't rot. I mean, they're they're um, really well made, looks like. Yes, and they, they have a lot of design features. Um, there are vents. You know, wooden hives don't have all these vents, so sometimes if it's really, really hot, or you can you can open the vents for the bees, and it, oh, okay. it makes certain things certain things easier. Okay. Um, so just a little so, uh, yep. a little more climate control abilities and right, things like right, that. Right, right, right. Yeah, try to give them the, the nicest nicest stuff, you know, make them happy. Sure. And um, I'm using, uh, this is just the hive tool that I have. Uh, okay. You definitely need a hive tool uh, when you get started, so this is this is the kind of hive tool that I have. It's it's got a nice, uh, I wouldn't say sharp, but a, a, a nice edge for being able to open up, open up the hive. And when they, uh, when they're uh, in here, they, they seal up everything uh, with something called propolis. So it makes it sticky and it's kind of their insulation. So okay. you're opening oh, wow. up, Look at that. You're, uh, when you open it up there, everything's stuck together. So you need a sharp edge to uh, get it pried apart. So. Okay, well, that makes sense. So, uh, this is this is uh this is a little unusual. Typically, they don't build uh, comb on the undersides of the what's called a feeder. This is this is an empty feeder. That's why it's upside down. But uh, if the camera can see that, that's a uh, that's a group of bees right there. They're uh, they're trying to be productive and build wherever they have free space. Um, but I'm going to set this aside and uh, I'll uh, take off the other feeder and we'll pull a frame and see. Okay. see what it looks like in there god they look really healthy i mean they're just <laughs> i mean they're all yeah there, there's a bunch there there's a lot um definitely a lot of bees i mean that's just that's just packed full of life that's what that is <laughs> oh wow and uh i hope the microphone can pick that up <laughs> one thing uh one thing if you when you're starting out you try to do stuff slow and you know, if if you're moving too quickly, they'll let you know. They'll they'll start buzzing you everywhere. Okay. Are they letting us know right now? <laughs> they're they're starting to figure out that something's going on. Okay. That they're they're trying to uh, you know enjoy their evening. <laughs> well, I'll just follow your lead. <laughs> <clears throat> so these uh, what I just took out of the hive now. Um, this is uh, the divider, and it it allows uh, the frames to to uh, be spaced apart. Um, because the bees like a certain uh, spacing between the uh, frames, um, okay. and maybe we can uh, we can get a top shot and add that in later. Okay. Um, to, so people can see what it looks like. But yeah, um, that that's the part I'm removing now. Is it uh, it uh, it keeps the frames apart a certain certain width so that the bees stay happy and Keep, keeps uh, that spacing exact. Right. Right. Yep. I yep. bet that what with the airflow and things too. Yeah, just... exactly, exactly. Okay. And those are in wood hives as well. And uh -huh. this is just, uh, and you can oh, wow. see at... I'm using the blade to get it out too. So that's they... not wax that that's holding that together. You call it something different. It, this but... is called uh, it's called propolis. Okay. And they uh, they manufacture that. Every bee can make it, uh, and uh, it's just a, a sticky residue that helps insulate and seal things. It's like caulk for them. Right. Exa yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Um, it's it's really a, a pretty amazing uh, pretty amazing substance. Just like wow. the wax and the honey, they, the bees make a lot of a lot of interesting things. Yeah, you see all the combs and, and right. all the little intricate structures in there. Yeah, it is it is pretty amazing. Uh, and I'll, I'll I'll pull the frame and you'll see it's just it's amazing that the architecture and it's beautiful, really. Everything I mean. they build. I'll get. An, I'll pull this middle frame here, okay. and I'm using the hook. If you can see that, this see. this hook is to help get the frame started, to get it get a grip on it. So you just, okay, just pry, pry it up, up a, a little, little bit, bit. <laughs> and just being slow and calm, and sure. they uh, they don't really care a whole lot. As long as you don't drop them or anything. Is it true that they can sense like if you're panicking or freaking out? I think uh, I think they might. You know, if you're if you're breathing heavy or you know, they they probably can detect something. Okay. Um, but there you go. Wow, that's look a, at that. That's a frame of bees. Oh wow, it's full of honey. Look at that. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm making yep. them mad. No, that was me. I laughed too. Uh, 
So is this like the the CO two in your breath or something? Yes. Maybe they react yep. to. Yep. Mm. I have read. I have read that they uh, they do react to that. Um, wow, it's shiny. Oh man, it looks yes. delicious. Yeah. But it's you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to mess with them right now. I mean, <laughs> that's interesting. Yes. Because you could see any any raccoon or something like that would just love a piece of that oh, stuff, right. but you don't want to hmm. you don't want to deal with what's in front of it. Right. Right. Um, yeah. They. Uh, yeah, when when they get when they get mad, they they can just become a cloud of angry wow. uh, angry bees. So. It, and it's like instinctual too. You hear that you hear that buzz coming. Right. It's it's, it's sort right. of unnerving. It, yeah, it definitely gets the hair on the back of your neck to stand up. Yeah. And, so. Oh wow. Yeah, Gosh, as you can see, I, you know, I'm just I'm holding this outside the hive, and they're just doing doing their thing, going about their business. So what, will you take all this honey for you or will you take out like, like a certain amount of frames or like if you're going to harvest honey, in other words, and, you know, I assume you do it in the fall, right? Uh, is, yes, is when you, you can. Honey? Yep, you can. Um, I've done it in the past that way. And um, yep, typically I try to grab, um, you know, any, any frame that looks pretty much like it's entirely honey. And, um, you know, this one, this one's pretty close. I've, I've been checking this hive throughout the season and they've converted it from brood to the honey now. So this is, this is something they're starting to pack in the honey. Okay. Um, so yeah, and I would, uh, I would just check and see, you know, what, and try to figure out what I could take and what I should leave based on, uh, based on their needs. How do you get the honey out of there? Like, how does it get out of the, do you, you like have a, to spin it? Yeah. You, yes. You use a fancy machine called a, a honey extractor. And okay. Um, obviously there's no bees on the frame when you're using one of those machines, you'd have to, you'd have to kind of dust these guys off and, okay. and get, just get a frame by itself just with honey and no bees on it. And that can take some time, but, uh, yep, that's how you to get them the to abandon their, uh, right. Their, their, their hard work. There. I know, yeah. I know, oh, but man. it's, 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 uh, delicious stuff. So, yeah. um, and I, you know, I do leave, I do leave them plenty of honey for themselves. So, well, when you, do you just like put do you do you take up like a you spin it a little bit and then put it back or you just you just selectively take out let's say like 40 percent of these racks and then leave the rest like untouched yeah i will uh, yeah i will i will eventually put the frame back and obviously there's no honey on the frame when i put it back but then they can just reuse the the wax and uh, start filling with honey again um will so. they like harvest anything that's left on here like, like when, you, when you have you can, like the after you spin the honey out of it like right. and you put the will the bees come back and start what's their like what will they start doing they'll just start reusing the, the uh, honeycomb itself and they'll okay. put whatever they need to in there but if you can see right, right at my finger my finger's kind of pointing there this lighter looking stuff that's that's the capped yeah it's so like they, sealed they, over they sealed it exactly so that ah. that's what it that's what this will all look like in the end is when it's all oh. honey it'll all be it'll have this smooth cap on it. Okay. Um, and Do you the, use your little scraper thing to scrape that cap off? Yes. Or? Yes. There's a there's a designated tool for that as well to to break open the the seal from that okay. cap. Um, okay. But yes, when when this thing is full of honey, you really you can really feel it. I mean it. When, when these frames are absolutely full of honey and capped, I mean, this, this, it's, this is quite substantial, the amount of weight in, in yeah. one frame, so. And I guess, and that's, that's what honey comes in, right? Is you get it by the pound, like it's not like a volume sort of thing, right, usually. Right, it's, right, yeah. That's how you measure your harvest, right? It's by right. the pound. By the pound, right, huh. right. Interesting. Yep. Yep, what, so. what, what would you think would make you uh, happy, like in terms of pounds off of a harvest? I mean, do you, do you get different, different results from year to year or is it all it, pretty consistent it, or it, does it know, matter where you are or yes it you know it really does depend um on a lot of things um and just to throw a number out there 100 pounds of honey um would be a nice uh that'd be a nice uh something to collect from the hive would be 100 pounds that's, of honey that's a lot of honey that is a lot of honey that's that's amazing <laughs> wow and I, so i guess uh basically the more things that are around for them to collect, what pollen is that? What they collect? Yep, they, yep, they, pollen. Yep, they go around and and uh, it's neat to watch them when they're flying in at the front entrance down there. Sometimes you'll notice they have these bright little colors on their legs, and that's packets of pollen that they've oh, gone wow. out and collected. So there's reds and greens and yellows and oh, cool, so all you, kinds of stuff. So so that's probably indicative or of what they're collect, like what yep. flowers that they're on. Yep. Yep, there's a uh, there's a pollen color chart, and you can uh, you can Google oh, okay. you know you can look that stuff up, and 
and try to figure out, you know, oh, they might be going to that plant based on your, you know, what you know grows in the area. You can get an idea of what they're collecting. That's, that's awesome. So it, it is really interesting to watch them. I'll just sit up here, I'll just sit out and watch them sometimes flying in and they're just, you know, it's really entertaining. You can learn a lot just from watching them. I guess the main goal, like, I guess it's probably really important that they have a source that goes throughout the season. Like they go, they jump from one thing to the next as right, something right. becomes yep. in bloom and right. yep. you try to try to figure out where your lag, where your gaps are maybe, yes. and then try to supplement somewhere in there to keep them going. Yes. If you're, uh, if you want to plant, you know, things for the bees, try to plant a, you know, stuff that blooms in, in different times of the year. You mm-hmm. know, so just have all the all the seasons covered, or you know, as much time as possible covered for the bees. So you always have something in bloom and, and available for the bees. If you're if you're looking yeah. for stuff to plant, just make sure you have everything covered in every time of uh, the year, growing year. So that way they, they don't have to go through a period of uh, of drought or right. shortage or hunger. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's neat. Yep. Wow. Yeah, there, there's a lot. There's a lot to learn, and I, I'm still learning, of course. You know, I, you know, I am. I'm still learning, and there, there's a, uh, there's uh, all kinds of things to learn about honeybees. Well, that's that's you know, that's nature in general. That's the great <laughs> thing about learning about nature is you, it's like endless. You'll right. never, you'll never learn it all. That's right. That's it just right. Just keeps on going. Yep. Definitely. Well, what um. Have you ever had any problems with like pests? Like you have like raccoons or, or something? I mean, we don't have bears around here, but. No, there's no bears. We... Um, no, but um, actually the uh, the biggest threat to these honeybees is actually the tiniest uh, or one of the smaller smallest things and it's called the Varroa mite. Okay, and, um, yeah. I've I, heard something uh, about mites with bees. Yes, yes, the Varroa mite is, is a, a honeybee keeper's uh, worst enemy at this point. Um, and not only are they uh, a parasite, but they also can transmit a virus to the bees, um, and uh, they can just they can just take over a hive. And I actually just treated this hive recently because um, my uh, my mite count was was way way too high, so I had to I had to treat in order to prevent them from killing off the hive. Okay. Um, wow. So, and my first year, I. The first year of beekeeping, I tried to you know just not use any treatment and see what would happen and unfortunately it, that that's what happens is um, they die off and most likely it's the varroa mite every time that that uh, just overwhelms the hive and, and kills it off so so is that something that we just deal with in this area or this country or is it it's, all over the world it's or? pretty widespread uh, at least in the united states uh, a lot of people okay. deal with it yep and a lot of people deal with the the mite um, and there there are other other problems small hive beetle and all kinds of different things, but that that is the varroa mite is one of the one of the worst problems right now. How far will these guys travel in order to find a flower to 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 get nectar or pollen off of? They uh they can travel anywhere uh, up to two to three miles. Um, so wow. they they definitely uh, they can get a lot of mileage in their short life, um, and you uh you can even tell uh, if it's an older bee because their wings will actually look worn down because they you know they fly so much. Oh wow! Um, like it's just a little particles of dust and things in the air yeah the, kinda... the edges of their wings will, will look a little tattered because uh you know they've they've uh they've okay. flown a lot of miles so okay so like yep. that guy right there it looks like he's a little bit older yes maybe. yeah yeah if the All wings right. look a little a uh, little worn out then you definitely yeah. know uh, she's uh she's flown a lot of miles okay yep that's it are they all so they're all females the all all of the ones we're seeing right now are female. Okay. And uh, obviously the queen is a female as well and right. she is she is most likely deeper in the hive somewhere um and the other type is the male and that's called the drone and uh okay. they're very easy uh to spot um, because they're much larger and they have huge eyes um okay. they almost have freakishly large eyes um and i don't see them at the moment but we uh we just had a bunch recently because it was the uh, uh, uh breeding season so they were they were they were making a lot of drones to go off oh, and okay. mate with queens so Okay, um, yep. that's interesting. They, they fluctuate like that. Right. What do the, yep. what do the drones do? do? They have any other, any other purpose other than that's breeding? It. That's it. Yeah. the the male The male bee uh, lives a, a very uh, simple life, and uh, they they do get fed. The worker bees do feed them uh, to keep them going. But other than that, as soon as their use is over, then they're they're thrown oh. out the. And you, sometimes you can watch them dragging males out of the hive <laughs> and keeping them out of the hive like the wife kicking the 
the man out of the house. So that's pretty funny. Yep, that's like he's not, uh, not doing any work. So. No, right, right. Okay. That's right. So yeah, you're out. That's that's interesting. <laughs> how do they know? Like when they go out to to forage, how do they, how do the other bee? Do they follow each other, or do they like have like pheromones, like ants? That like, uh, how does that how does that that is actually work? uh honeybees are very unique in the fact that they uh, they do something called a waggle dance, they, and. They, uh, it, it's a uh, it's it's a very interesting thing. I I, I like, haven't witnessed it in person. Like while they're flying, like well, in the air, or do they do it on? They'll uh they'll come into the hive and they'll they'll gather a lot of bees around and then they'll start walking around real funny like on the on the comb and and wiggling, uh, wiggling their abdomen as they walk and and somehow that communicates to the the bees that are watching that there's a there's a certain place to go to get That's... get the good stuff. That's crazy. Yes. And you're just telling them directions. Right. Yep. Oh, yep. Wow. Just by walking around. And there, there are a lot of videos out there, and I recommend looking that up just, just to enjoy that. Because yeah, that I is definitely really, check that out. That's that amazing. is really, really interesting. Oh, wow. You might be lucky to catch it, uh, catch it one day in your own hive. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're starting to get a little dark here. Um, but daylight, yeah, I did want to met daylight. Um, so does is there a special spot that you'd like to keep your hive like should it be out in the i know you got this in a little bit of shade here, right right um on the edge of the woods it's ideal to have them with some morning sun and okay the way i i place my hives i couldn't i couldn't do that but um if you are wondering it's nice to give them some morning sun so they can get warmed up in the morning okay. um, but also some shade in the afternoon because it, it can get very hot in the hive um, and you can even see them if if it is hot enough, they'll start, they'll be all clustered around the front and they'll be trying to cool down the hive by fanning it with their wings. So oh, wow. they do like to have a, a, a cool spot in the, in the, in the summer sun. Um, but a, you know, really anywhere that works, um, they, uh, they'll make it work. So don't work, don't fret too much. The, these bees are, are here and, and they've done very well. So I guess, I guess color too, the color of the hive, you usually see them, they're usually kind of like lighter colors. Right, they're not, right. you don't see like a black hive. Right. Or... Yeah. Yeah. The, the lighter color helps, uh, you know, you don't okay. want something that just sucks in, sucks in uh, heat. Yeah. Um, yeah. You do want something that's bright and colorful and uh, yeah, just something to keep the sun, sun uh, at bay. Okay. All right. Well, Wade, that's, that's really interesting. I think we're going <laughs> to run out of daylight here pretty soon. <laughs> I think we covered uh, covered a lot of topics Definitely. there. Definitely, and there there is a lot to cover. Um, well, what's a good place like if people wanted to learn or get more information? Do you have any like literary resources or or people you should try to ask? I mean, does the I extension would, service the, like, an do extension a lot of service stuff? would be a great place to start? Okay. Um, and I, I definitely recommend going to your local beekeeping association. A beekeeping um, association. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Look, look up, see if there's one in your area. Um, this is like a club. Is it? it yes. Beekeeping. Okay. And and uh, you can tap into a lot of experience uh, from those people. Some sometimes there's people that have been doing it a very long time. Um, so you could maybe get a mentor or. Uh, just yeah. get a lot of information from going to a meeting or two. I would imagine uh, beekeepers are probably sort of like gardeners too in the, in the respect that they're probably pretty uh, generous with sharing knowledge. Yes. Oh yes. I, to younger I, people and stuff I did especially. not get started on my own. I had, uh, I had a bunch of help to get, get these started. Um, yeah. So yes, yes, okay. definitely. Definitely uh, ask around and, and if nothing else, just look on the internet and, and see, see what people say. So there's That's a lot awesome. of a lot of information out there. And I, I could probably use, uh, it's probably beneficial to have these nearby to the garden too, just for pollinating, right? Cause yes. there's not a whole lot of native pollinators really left in the picture. No, anymore. you know, a, a lot right. of tension, a lot of tension is given to the honeybees, but um, you know, there are a lot of different native pollinators. Okay. Um, and I think that will be my next, my next project, you know, what, these, these are nice to have, but um, you know, native pollinators also need a lot of help because they deal with the same issues, not, not necessarily the same issues that honeybees have, but you know, pesticides and different things. You know, they, they are living in the same environment and they need a home as well. And, and they're um, probably not as well studied. No. Also too, just because the, I mean, well, our whole, a lot of our agriculture depends on the honeybee. That's so right. So if they're threatened, then it's a lot more of a that's right. I guess scary situation directly to us or an immediate threat than um, than than these different you know, larger variety of native right uh, yes. bees. Yes. Yes. So I assume there's lots of different kinds of native pollinators. Oh, I mean, yes. you, when you're talking, that's, you're not even necessarily necessarily talking about just bees. You're talking <laughs> about all kinds of 
pollinating oh, it's, insects. It's, a, it's amazing. Uh, you, know, you start looking looking into these things, and there's there is a lot to learn. I, I definitely recommend doing something to help out the native pollinators because they they play an important part as well. They definitely do. Well, they so. they would native pollinators. If you build like a home for them or something, it wouldn't necessarily look like this. They'd probably, I would imagine, they probably shack up in all kinds of different shapes yes. and sizes of yep. and, little and things you could make. That's maybe. right. And and some are solitary. So there are solitary uh, pollinators as well. So uh, they really don't need a lot of space. They don't need a huge beehive. Um, and if you okay. look up native pollinator houses, you'll see all kinds of different designs. Right. And uh, definitely... Uh, well, that's what I, I've seen some stuff. It's just like sticks or little uh, pieces of like little bamboo or reeds right. or something that people put together and, right. and house... Uh, you yep. know, try to bring some native pollinators into their gardening yep. situation by doing that. Yeah, we definitely need to help them out as well. They're, uh, they play an important part as well, for sure. Well, it's getting a little later here, and I guess these guys are going to be getting ready to go to bed, right? <laughs> That's right. That's so, right, uh, yep. They, um, they'll just sleep in here in, uh, you know, nice and uptight for the, for the nighttime. The winter, the winter time, that's a good question, is when, if you lock these... Um, you know, if you close these up for the winter, is there anything special you have to do, or like, what what are they? I mean, do they just go to sleep or hibernate, or they? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, they actually, um, they will actually make a uh, a uh, set of bees that are just for the winter, uh, because you know that the brood brood cycles so much. You know, they have short lives and they make a lot of bees, um, so they'll make a winter winter bee that uh it will it will hibernate and uh that uh that bee will need honey and different things throughout the year or throughout the winter excuse me um so i like to i like to be generous and give them plenty of honey okay um but you know people uh people have their own ways and um if you take take honey you can always supplement it with uh sugar water and different things there's a lot of ways to help try and get your bees through the winter but um, typically, I, I like to give them honey, and uh, another another reason to brag uh, brag about the nice qualities of this Apame hive is <laughs> it has insulation built in. So oh, okay. these uh, these walls are, are are insulated. So they're hollow, and they got like what like foam inside yes, them. Yes, exactly. Like that? Yep. Okay. Yep. That's if you smart. go uh, go to the website and explore this, if you're curious, you you do uh, you, you can see pictures of that. But um, I I believe this the, these hives have helped helped me out. Um, Helped me out because I have I have friends that have wooden hives and and they did not see uh, see all their bees survive the winter so yeah um, it may have something to do with the design of the hive that uh, helps the bees out sure but, um, yeah there's there's a lot of ways to help the bees out through the winter because that is a challenging time for them of course sure and they just basically they they don't they're not going out and gathering anymore they're just kind of sitting and protecting the hive I guess and yeah just that's keeping right. it just keeping it clean and, and yeah that's and, right yep yep okay. they. Uh, yeah, they try to they try to hold hold on and keep everything uh, keep everything alive and and ready to go for the spring. Okay. Well, can we? Uh, we're all locked up now. Can we take these hoods yep, off? Yeah, absolutely. Can, they yep. seem like they've calmed back down. And... <laughs> yeah, they don't. Uh, they don't get too riled up. Okay. Um, and th these are the Italian Italian bees. So. You said that you were, you told me before when we were working one day that. Uh, that you've you've driven around with these in your car. Yes, like, yes. I talk uh, about that for a second. I think that's pretty wild. <laughs> they uh, yes to uh, to pick up uh, my bees. I, I buy them in something called a nuke, which is just a term for uh, you know a couple frames inside a box. But they are they're inside the car, and occasionally there's one or two flying around inside the car, and you know it's it's a it's not a big deal. Uh, uh, so I get for you. I, I don't know if I... <laughs> as long as you don't have a. You know, uh, angry bees, or you know, just yeah, you know. sure. Yeah, there are there are bees out there that are easy to work with, and that those are the ones I have. I guess stay off the uh, the high speed roads. That's right. You, yes. you start to have yes. an issue, yes. then uh, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. want to be somewhere you can pull over That's pretty right. quickly. That's right. Yeah, you want to be able to get the windows down quick if you wow. need to. <laughs> yeah, but you know what you're doing. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely it is a lot of fun. Honestly, when, once you get rolling with it, uh, it it's it's a lot of fun, and uh, the honey the honey there's nothing like tasting your own honey yeah i will say I'll that bet. well because you know it, you put in the work too i mean and you you respect right. it and you understand what's going on i mean that that in itself just makes it taste that much that's sweeter. right that's right i definitely have a lot of respect for them because uh they they are some hard working 
hardworking creatures. So sure, uh, they they can help us out too. I've heard that um, eating local honey can help with like allergies and stuff yes, too. Yes, right? absolutely. There's some health absolutely. benefits associated yes. with that. Yep. Yep, I've given right. it to people that have allergies and- uh, Well, hey, I'm gonna need some. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you yeah, some as yeah. well. Um, yes, like uh, if you're allergic to, to uh, you know, pollen from certain plants and yeah. you eat the honey, it, it, uh, it can help, it can help. Yeah, just, I'm not, I don't, I'm not allergic to any foods or medications or anything, it just seems like the, when the tree pollen comes out in the springtime, right. oh, yes. I, get, I get hammered, I'll man. come out here and wipe the pollen dust off the hive, yeah. you know? Oh, man. It gets bad, but- It's uh, all over the cars and stuff. <laughs> The bees are happy because they're collecting all the pollen. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that makes somebody. Right, right. <laughs> well, this worked out great. I mean, I didn't get stung. I'm surprised how, uh, really, just how calm they are. Yeah. We were sitting here and messing with them and, and taking no apart smoker, their house and no all that. smoker. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. Right, right. Yep, you don't I've always heard... need a smoker. I, I tend to, you know, if, if I really think I'm going to need one, but I, I otherwise, I, okay. I, they're calm on their own. They don't need They don't need to be bothered with that. So That's, that's really interesting. Yep. Yeah, I guess if you don't need it, you know, don't don't use it if you don't need it. Right, right. Well, I didn't. I mean, I've never been this close to a <laughs> beehive before, and you know, they're just fine around me. Right. Okay. Yep. Well, that's awesome, man. All right. Well, um, that's a that's a pretty cool video. Yeah. So, right on. Uh, right on. Yeah. Maybe we'll do another. Uh, maybe we'll harvest in the fall or something going forward. We can shoot another yes. video about Har it. Yes. Harvesting is an exciting I time. Think, uh, of I course. think. I think some people would probably pretty cool to see some uh, some future stuff with these yep absolutely all right absolutely. wade well well thank you and uh thank you guys for watching hope you liked our video and we'll see you next time